from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. How you guys doing? Wow, we got like a huge crowd we right do. now. We do! How are you doing? Hello! Hey, I'm Genevieve. And I'm DC. On the count of three, scream! One, two, three! Yay! All right. We are Choo Choo Soul, and we're your hosts for today. It's going to be a great day. We're also doing something really, really fun on Twitter. If you can see on the screen, well, I saw it before. We have some questions about our favorite kids' books. So when we come ask you questions, you can tweet your answers, and you can put the, what is that called again? The hash mark. Hash, hash, hashtag. Hashtag. Hashtag fave kids book, and you can put that up on Twitter so we can check out your answers. Say, um, do you guys like to read? Yeah? Who okay. knows how to read? Oh, we well, are so lucky. We are so, so lucky. Well, so do our friends at Target. We want to welcome a special friend to the stage to tell you who's up next. Say hi to Reba Dominski from Target, but she told me to pronounce it Reba. What was that? Reba. <laughs> like a sheep, like you know? Oh. All right. Please help us bring to the stage Reba, Reba Dominski. Dominski. Hey, you Thank you, Choo Choo. I am Ray Ba Dominski from Target. And it is so cool to see so many families here celebrating reading with us. I have to tell you guys, I love to read. And I have two kids in Minnesota. They're 9 and 11. And they are so jealous that they're not here celebrating reading with all of you. You guys know it gets really cold in Minnesota. We get lots of snow. It gets really cold. And our favorite thing to do as a family is get together under a blanket and read some good books. So we are really excited to be here with you today. Um, at Target, we support students just like you and schools and teachers across the country. Did you guys know that we give 5% of our dollars back to local communities? That's 5%, but let me tell you how much that is in dollars, all right? It's $3 million every single week of the year to help kids just like you across the country. And we made a commitment to education and reading. And we said by the end of 2015, so that's in four years, that we'll give a billion dollars to education and reading. Do you guys know how many zeros are in a billion? Nine zeros in a billion. So we're really excited about that commitment. It's all about you, because you know what we want you to do? We want you to read. If you read really, really well by the end of third grade, you are four times more likely to graduate from high school. But we don't want you just to graduate from high school. We don't want you to stop at high school. You know where we want you to go? College. Raise your hand if you want to go to college. Yes! It is now my honor and privilege to present to you the next reader on this stage. This person is one of my personal heroes, and he's a man with a very important job. How many of you have heard of the Library of Congress? Lots of you, awesome. Our next guest is Dr. James Billington, and he's the Librarian of Congress, which is the largest library in the world. So he has a really, really important job. Besides serving as that librarian, he's also a historian, and he's an author, and he has generously given his time today to read with all of us. So please join me in welcoming, giving him lots of applause, Dr. James Billington. Okay. <clears throat> well, I'm... My name's Billington, I'm the Librarian of Congress, and we're just glad to see all you kids here. It's wonderful. Now, I'm gonna read to you a nonsense poem, but written by a man named Edward Lear. Uh, have you ever, have you ever s talked a little nonsense poem to one another? This man lived 170 years ago, and he read his poems to the Queen of England to all kinds of people. And this one is about something you probably can't imagine. And that is a cat and a bird who go off 
in a boat. And, you know, cats eat birds, so this couldn't really happen. And birds fly away when they see a cat coming because they know they might be eaten. But in this poem, and they don't go in boats together, but this poem they do. So you just listen a while. Now, first of all, uh, how's it, you know how, to, how an owl goes? Anybody knows? Anybody knows how an owl goes? Goes, whoo, whoo, whoo. Let's, let's hear you all be owls. Ready? Whoo, whoo, whoo. And the answer to whoo, whoo, whoo that the owl says is the cat, which goes meow, meow. Can everybody meow? Can you do a good meow? Meow, meow, meow. Or sometimes they just purr and go brrrr. They're very happy. But anyhow, this is Mr. Edwin Lear. Have you ever heard of Edwin Lear? And has anybody ever heard of him? Well, you're going to hear him now. This is his favorite poem. And Queen Victoria, back in England, liked to hear this too. The owl and the pussycat went to sea in a beautiful pea green boat. They took some honey and plenty of money wrapped up in a five pound note. The owl looked up to the stars above, and he sang to a small guitar. Oh, lovely pussy. Oh, pussy, my love. What a beautiful pussy you are. You are what a beautiful pussy you are. Pussy said to the owl, you elegant fowl, how charmingly sweet you sing, ta-la-la. Oh, let us be married. Too long we have tarried. But what shall we do for a ring? A ring. What shall we do for a ring? So they sailed away for a year and a day to the place where the bong trees grow. And there in a wood, a piggy wig stood. How did the piggy wigs go? Oink, 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 you see. The piggy wig stood with a ring on the end of his nose. His nose, his nose, with a ring on the end of his nose. Dear pig, are you willing to sell for one shilling the ring, said the piggy, I will, oink, oink. So they took it away and were married next day by the turkey who lives on the hill. Now, what does the turkey go? Gobble, 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 you know? So how's this turkey doing? Well, we'll find out. They dined on mince and slices of quince, which they ate with a runcible spoon. And hand in hand on the edge of the sand, they danced by the light of the moon. The moon, the moon. They danced by the light of the moon. Now that was his poem, but he didn't, he wasn't satisfied because he thought that if, they, if the owl and the pussycat got married, what would their children look like? So just before he died, he tried to continue the poem, and it went this way. Uh, it's called The Children of the Owl and the Pussycat. It was never finished, but it began by the children of the cat and the owl saying, our mother was the pussycat, our father was the owl, and so we're pre partly little beasts and partly little fowl. The brothers of our family have feathers and they hoot, hoo, hoo, hoo. While all the sisters dress in fur and have long tails to boot. So remember, a lot of fun things can rhyme. I mean, there's another one. That, um, George, George Wellington, Wellington, Weatherby, George Dupree took good care of his mother, though he was only three. See, you can do that too. Mother said, James George Willington, Willington, whether it be George Dupree, said, don't you go down to the end of the town unless you go down with me. So bring your mothers and your grandmothers and your grandfathers. Read to each other. Yep, there they are. Wave to you. Thank you all and have a wonderful time together.
This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.